Hello, my name is Isaiah, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the ECS Z270 ITX motherboard. Alright, so on to the review. Uh, in the written section, I did a unboxing of this with all the information that has come along and what's inside of it. There's a manual, there's uh, SATA cables, and pretty much what you expect from any motherboard. Now this is a ITX motherboard and form factor. It came from ECS as you see right here. And uh, this is actually a great little motherboard. I had a great time dealing with it. So let me go over the different parts and kind of what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it. So first up, um, I'm gonna talk about what is and is not included. So the Wi-Fi card right here is, can, can be bundled with your system or not. Uh, the review copy I got, the sample I have here, did not come with a Wi-Fi card. And this one right here is actually from the Leva Z unit I reviewed earlier. I just took it out and put it in here. Now, they come. it comes with antennas, that's included, but the actual card is nothing, nothing's included there, it's just empty slot. And uh, it depends on what you're doing, you may want to opt in to get that card pre-installed because it's a little bit of a pain to, uh, to actually get it set up. The little wires are really small, um, but besides that, it's not a huge deal. Next, I want to talk about is the actual layout here. Now, on the back, there is a M2 slot, a full M2 slot right here. It supports up to 80 millimeter cards. Now, interesting fact about this one right here is that all Z270 motherboards support the Optane SSD from Intel. It's basically a caching drive. It's not really what we consider SSD these days, but it has a feature right here and I don't, I'm not a huge fan of this slot being on the back. It's because, um, for one, a clearance issue. Now, not all, the, not all motherboards have enough height for clearance. So if you have a case, sorry, not motherboard, but a uh, case. So if you don't have a case that has enough clearance, this um, is going to make contact with the back of your, of your case. You know, there's usually a large cutout for, you know, this size board. But in case there is no cutout for this, this it's going to, interact with that and interfere with installing anything here. The next problem is to say that clearance is not an issue is generally a heat sink. Uh, normal SSDs performance drives will thermal throttle and they need, they need active cooling, they need a large heat sink on it. So having in the back of the board where almost no airflow ever happens for any case I've come across is a huge letdown. Uh, so that is a, a factor you might want to consider when buying this board for the SSD capabilities. Now, uh, the Optane drive takes like three watts to run, so if you do install it and you don't have any clearance problems, it's not gonna overheat, that's not gonna be a problem, but uh, anybody who wants to use this a normal M2 uh, SSD drive is gonna run into a lot of, I think a lot of problems on the back here. So moving on to the layout here, this is a pretty standard for an ITX board. You have your memory, you have your slot for the CPU, and there's a good amount of space here that you can put most coolers on it. I think you are going to be limited to some coolers that will hit, you know, the heat sink or, or hit the VRMs or any of that. But if you, you know, a lot of those brands will say clearance of X amount or the memory has X amount of clearance, that's not going to be a factor. But just keep that in mind that space is condensed here. So normally when you see other motherboards, you might have more a gap between the memory and the socket, or you might have more space where the VRMs are. This is obviously not one of those choices. You can't really do that with a board this small. Uh, with that in mind, you have the memory, not sorry, memory, you have the audio in the very bottom. These are Nichicon MW uh, audio capacitors, gold series. And uh, they're, you know, pretty high end for a budget motherboard like this. There is no like special secondary chip. Uh, they have a Realtek AC1150 uh, in here, I believe, which is a standard for the highest end uh, Realtek chip you're gonna get. They don't make anything higher than that. It means it, means it has support for playback of 24 
um, bit, 192 kilohertz playback, you know, the standard features you find in a quality audio part. And when I did my testing, I actually didn't have any problems uh, with playback. It sounded fine. Uh, the benchmark I ran for the, for the audio was crystal clear. The benchmark reported there was excellent response to that. So that's a really good thing to see for a system like this. You're not really compromising too much even though you're in a small form factor. And even on top of that, there's actually tracers here. You can't really see, I might do a zoom up here. Um, so when it lights up, you can actually see a red tracer here that cuts off um, basically the audio from the rest of the section. And that gives a good uh, signal noise uh, deduction there. So when you have other parts running, the noise kind of drops off where it gets the split is. Now lastly, I'm going to talk about is kind of a twofold thing. So it's still part of the audio uh, issue here is that when you have a full size video card on here it and it, you're not using a blower style, it's going to dump the heat right across uh, these uh, capacitors. Uh, the problem with these capacitors, they are, they are rated for 85 Celsius, which means that uh, if you're dumping a lot of heat from a gaming system and you don't have say the right amount of cooling, you know, a lot of those cases have very poor, poor cooling capabilities as far as, you know, you only get one fan intake or one fan outtake. There's usually not too many choices when it comes to ITX form factors. Uh, so if you're getting a video card that is not, not a blower style, like the video cards here, the blower ones, um, you're going to have the air dump all over this, and that, in the term, is going to actually cause... Uh, long-term issues I think I think without a heat shield a year or higher rated uh, capacitors you may run into issues where you know the capacitors just go out after a few years now it's hard for me to say exactly what's going to happen I'm not an engineer but when I look at the specifications they say 85 Celsius and it's placed right where the PCIe slot is it gives me an indication that maybe that's going to be a problem in the future on top of that the battery is right here I mean that's those two things uh, kind of is not the best spot for hot air dumping on there. I think the best way to get around that would be to use a blower style cooler. Just dump the air out of the case. You don't have to worry about it going across the board. So finally, I'm going to talk about is just the actual um, I.O. ports in the back. You have your standard P2 uh, PS2 slot for, you know, your old peripherals that our legacy. The yellow spots here, slots here, are actually low latency USB. Um, then you got your standard HDMI and um, display port. So if you have a iGPU, the one, you know, the i5 or whatever that supports the Intel graphics on the chip, those ports will become active. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to be used. Then you got your USB 3.1 slots. Now, Keep in mind, these are not Gen 2 slots, they are Gen 1, so the fire, f highest they go is 5 gigabits a second. They're not rated for the 10 gigabits you see on uh, some of these fancier boards. Then, next to that is you have two Ethernet jacks. One Ethernet jack is a Intel, and the other one is a Realtek, a Realtek um, jack that's competing with the killer uh, style Nix, and uh, it's... It, it doesn't matter which one. I use both and I didn't have any problems. I think uh, for this motherboard, the use of the second Ethernet jack is very limited. I don't know a uh, huge reason to have a second Ethernet jack on there, but it's a good feature to have just in case you're running a, a system that you needs two IP addresses or you do some teaming feature. Uh, that's not bad, especially if you're using this as a home P PC, home theater PC, uh, you know, having two ports might actually be really good. And then lastly, you have the audio jacks uh, with potentially gold plating. I don't know if it's real or not, but you know, it gives a little bit more um, jazz to the ports that are already pretty good. So that concludes the quick kind of overview review of this motherboard. Um, I really did like this motherboard. I still think there's some issues with audio um, capacity where they're placed, not the audio itself. Um, I didn't like the Wi-Fi, just the way it's handled. I really wish the Wi-Fi was set up where the I.O. ports here are, or maybe it's vertical so you can have um, the SSD in the front side because having SSD in the back 
can either be a clearance issue or a heat issue. And so unless you're using the Optane SSD, uh, you're gonna run into some problems with heat most likely. So that port's kind of a throwaway feature. And uh, other than that, I think this is a excellent motherboard for a budget-oriented person. Uh, you're not getting the bells and whistles you get from something maybe $200 $300, but at the same time, it was able to run my i7-77K just fine. I had my memory running at 3200, uh, which is in, within the OC specs, and I had no problems gaming on it, doing benchmarks on it. So I really think this is an excellent board for a budget person. Now, uh, this board is great for that, but if you're looking for you know high overclock abilities or SSC placement is better, you might have to look at a different brand because EZS only has this one board and it doesn't isn't the best for i would say uh placement of of its products i really don't think the ssd was a great spot for it the wi-fi kind of has a weird spot for it and the audio has a weird spot for it but if you were to overlook those features because of the price point this is excellent just pick up and go motherboard so thanks for watching um if you like this review definitely give it a thumbs up uh, the written review is in the link below and as always thanks for watching